This is the last mini lecture in the transonic aer aerodynamics and it's about the designs to conquer the sound barrier and because in the previous lectures we already noticed um, when the aircraft approaches to Mach 1 so the drag coefficient of the aircraft is, will increase significantly and in here we will discuss the designs, design methodologies to address the significant increase of the drag coefficient. So some barrier, we've actually briefly, we've already briefly seen uh, what is the some barrier. Now let's revisit the material and we've seen this curve CD versus uh, free stream Mach number. And we already know at the critical Mach number, the sonic region uh, starts to build up over the aerofoil, but it's very small, uh, small region, called it a su supersonic bubble. But once it's beyond the critical Mach number and uh, close to the drag divergence Mach number, the supersonic re region will become sufficiently large and introduce, make the drag um, to diverge in this case to increase significantly beyond point E. So um, regarding some barrier, we are talking about the region in EFG along that type of that that part of the curve. So in that region, the CD will increase by a factor of 10. So it's a so significant increase, so big increase, and it's like a barrier for for the aircraft to to overcome. So that's why we call it some barrier. And actually we've already seen how, what happens in the flow. Just uh, use a sketch to uh, remind you what happens. So uh, in the region EFG, we are expecting the second and the third uh, flow, top, flow pattern. So um, the second flow pattern has a, a uh, I would say reasonable size of the supersonic flow and the shock already is quite strong and we see there's possible flow separation after shock wave um, but uh, once uh, the free stream Mach number increases in this case for uh, to 0.82 we can see the normal shock wave over the top surface is even stronger and there's uh, considerable flow separation over the top surface, moreover, uh, over the lower surface, there is a shock wave appearing. So in this case, uh, it will produce even larger drag for the aircraft or for the wing. So this is the definition of the sound barrier. Okay, so now uh, we will see what our aerodynamic designers uh, to address the sound barrier, to address the drag increase. So the first design is the swept wing we are quite familiar with that nowadays all the transport aircrafts are equipped with the swept wing and i believe in the other modules you must be familiar with the reason and some people explain as the uh, using the swept wing we can decompose or project the free stream velocity vector and then because the swept angle, the actual or effective velocity the wing leading edge uh, experiences is uh, smaller than the free stream velocity. So this is one possible explanation. Now we see another explanation. So you can see here in the plot, we have a straight wing and a swept wing. So the straight wing has a chord of C1 and then the thickness, uh, thickness is T1. The maximum thickness is T1 and we have 45 degree swept wing in order to make the wing area the same, right? So we can we can maintain the, the length of the leading edge the same and simultaneously the the height of the parallelogram should be C1 2 so it's indicated through the red dotted line C1 so and in this case, the straight wing and the swept wing will have the same area. 
but um, the the other chord C2, which is a chord along the uh, fuselage or streamwise direction, C2 is square uh, is 1.41 times of C1 because it's 45 degree, and C2 is equals square root two times C1, so it's longer. So C2 is longer than C1, and now, since the uh, maximum thickness T2 is actually the same as T1, we are not changing the airflow, just uh, elongate it. So what we can see is a ratio of thickness uh, with respect to C1 and becomes smaller for the swept wing because the denominator becomes larger. Then the swept wing effectively has a thinner airflow compared to the straight wing. Is that right? So we already know from the earlier lecture that a signal error for you has a larger critical Mach number. So this helps to alleviate the, um, the drag increase for the transonic flight. So showing here is, uh, I think, a World War II um, aircraft. So it has equipped with a swept wing to address the uh, drag increase issue. Okay, so for swept wing, uh, we take uh, this is for the swept wing. The second design is area ruling. Perhaps this is not so familiar to us. And let's see what's what's area about. What's area? Since it, the title is about area ruling, and where's the area? Okay. So before we introduce the area ruling, ruling, um, we can see the evolution of aircraft design. And the left one is uh, North America F. 86 and the right one is from the same manufacturer F106. Apart from the wing, uh, if we focus on the uh, fuselage, can we uh, distinct find the spot the differences? I give you one second. Right. So the fuselage for the left one is quite straight, but for the second one, you can see there is a bit narrowing. Um, once in the middle and then expand slightly. So that's a difference. Okay, so if we take a look at the cross-sectional area of the aircraft, which means we are cutting, uh, for example, we have the top view in here, we're cutting the uh, a vertical cut, and so we get a lot of slices. It's like the loaf of the bread, right? Okay, so we can see some uh, indications in here. Um, so in the sketch below, um, we can uh, it's it's just a conceptual drawing. The left is a straight fuselage. The right one is uh, is like wedge shaped uh, uh, fuselage, uh, similar as the F one hundred six, and we can see the cross sectional area distribution. The right distribution with the neckling of the fuselage, we can see the distribution becomes smooth, is more smoother, is smoother than the straight fuselage. So this is a so-called area ruling, and the area ruling is to maintain the smooth transition of the cross-sectional area distribution, and this is uh, by experimental evidence uh, enables the uh, re reduction of um, aircraft aircraft dra drag. So this is uh, um, a design concluded from the experiments or wind tunnel experiments. And we can see some other examples, for example, the F-102. And you can see the left one, black and white picture, uh, is the original design of the F-102. And the right-hand side one, the color one, is uh, updated design. So you can see the difference of the fuselage. The original one, left one, has no area ruling, but the right one has an area ruling. And we can see uh, some sketches. This is from the Anderson book. And we can see, find the F102A with area ruling provides a smoother transition of the uh, cross-sectional area distribution along the longitudinal axis. 
And if we do the measurement, although it's a conceptual sketch again here, we expect the CD um, have less uh, increase after critical Mach number, a drag divergence Mach number. So this is what we expect. Okay, now we can finish the second design area ruling. So the last one is called supercritical error foil, and it's uh, used in every transonic uh, airplane nowadays, I would say. So a supercritical error foil is an error foil designed primarily to increase the drag divergence Mach number and to delay the onset of wave drag in the transonic speed range. And so here is a one-to-one -one comparison of the conventional error foil and the supercritical error foil. So for the, com uh, the supercritical error foil, let's see the features. It has increased nose radius and the top surface is flatter, so flat upper surface. And since we want to generate uh, lift, we need to introduce some camber to the aerofoil. So the camber is concentrated close to the trailing edge. And also we have blunt trailing edge. So this is a design features of the modern supercritical aerofoil. And so you may wonder, uh, is there a difference of the flow field? Yes, there are. And if the shock appears, we expect normal shock wave, strong normal shock wave on the conventional airfoil, but the super, uh, super critical one, uh, we expect uh, a weaker normal shock wave, and also it's more downstream. And since the uh, shock wave is weaker on the super critical airfoil, if we look at the uh, pressure distribution at lower, and we can find the pressure increase is smaller over the supercritical error for you. So, and this is what we um, have for the three designs to address some barrier. Mm. Hope you can uh, understand all the design features and their underlying mechanisms. And finally, I would like you to remember these two people. And um, so you may say, and there are three designs, only two people. Why? Because uh, one person, Richard Wickham, uh, has the credits for the um, area ruling, and both the area ruling and the, the supercritical area for you. So he's really important in forming the modern transport or transonic transport aircraft. So Adolf Busman is uh, um, proposed the idea of uh, swept wing and he was originally a German and after World War II he moved to the NASA Langley Center and uh, continued his research in the swept wing aerodynamics. And Richard Wickham is an, also a, an aerodynamicist in NASA Langley Center. They, they, were, they are actually colleagues and Richard is about 20 years younger than Boosman. So they do have communications during their, uh, in, in NASA. Okay, so now, till now, we've concluded, finished the transonic aerodynamics, and uh, we covered most of the important parts of transonic aerodynamics 